Hey, what's up guys? Frutalanel here, coming back at you again with another Python video, and we're still looking at Colorama, that really fancy module that allowed us to manipulate color in our terminal, and especially inside of our Python programs. We can output things, and even practically input things that are in a different color, and it kind of makes the visual experience for our programs a whole lot better, and kind of more fun. So uh, anyway, in this one, we're working out with a whole new idea, and what we're going to be doing is actually using streams with the color that we work with. Now, in this one, we're actually going to be choosing uh, a little bit of a switch or some sort of theory or mindset that might be a little bit advanced or at least something difficult to think about for now because, anyway, the Python that I'm running, the version of Python that I'm running is Python 2.7.8 three or whatever, maybe 2.7.2, .2. I don't know for sure, but anyway, later on, further on in life, after 2.7.3 or whatever version number it is, 2.7x something, after that was developed, they came out with the idea, or at least Guido Van Rossum, the guy that d developed Python, he had this idea of Python 3000, and with that sort of brain blaster project anyway, it, it, it brought about a whole lot of new functions and some changes to the language of Python. So anyway, one of the things that came out of it though was a change and a shift to the print function. And in fact, that it changed print to not so much of a keyword as it was previously. Like, you could print, you could use the print keyword without actually passing in um, some parentheses. You didn't have to have it be a function. But with 3000, though, it is, like, necessary that it becomes a, a real function. And in 2.7.3, it's optional. You don't have to use the parentheses, but you can. But in point in Python 3000 or Python 3, I don't, I don't know the whole back end of the story, but anyway, pi, pr the print function is a function, and it has a bit more accessibility, though, because we can actually pass in what it is that we're writing to, like changing the stream, whether or not we're working with standard output or standard error. So anyway, we can actually determine which print function we're going to be using, but anyway, we're going to be using by using another from clause or another statement. So we can actually use from, and what we're going to be changing, or at least what we're going to enter in here is two underscores, like you were typically defining uh, a function, you or like the initialized function in object-oriented programming, and future is the word that's wrapped in two underscores. Now we can go ahead and import print underscore function. Okay, now make sure this is at the top of your program, or else the interpreter might might kind of have a temper tantrum and have a hissy fit that, hey, why isn't this at the top of the program? This is important. If you're on Linux, it's okay to have the shebang line right up there, but just keep in mind that you do want this from future import print function up at the top. We're also going to want sys, the sys module, because I think we're going to be working with standard output and standard error, so we're going to be shifting things around just a little bit. And uh, we've got everything from Colorama already, so we should be good there. But what we're going to do, plain and simple, really quickly, is now that we've got everything imported, we can go ahead and print, let's say, 4.red as usual. This is red text. Now, if I were to create a new terminal, bring this over here so we can see it, and we're to run Python test, we get red text. I'm sorry, I must be looking at the wrong thing. Am I in thing.python? Sorry. Thing.python. This is red text, and then we have our raw input right there. Okay. So now, if we were to actually... Um, let's see, what do I want to do here? How can I, how can I show you this? If I did... Hmm. I think the best way is to actually continue with this on about adding... Um, more things to the print function. Because what we can do here actually is do four dot red this is red text and what we can set this to equal is end after a comma so we're adding another actually argument here. End is going to actually equal um two single quotation marks and an, an empty string. Very, very easy, very simple. This is red text. And I think I might actually even change this to green. So we can see more of that. This is green text and equals nothing, but we get this is green text. Okay. And we don't have a new line though. So that's all that that actually means. When you're using end equals uh, no line, no new line. We can, however, still note that for dot. Anyway, this is still green, 
we run that, this still green, that works okay. And we can, of course, add in a reset if we wanted to. Or we could even use our auto reset up in our initialize function. Do you see how many options we have here, guys? This is still green. Okay, so that works well for us. But now I want to actually show you more about this with redirecting it to a certain stream, or specifically standard error. So we can actually go ahead and change, like, uh, how about we do 4.red? 4.red. And the text that we output can be standard error is now red. What we would say is the file, or essentially the stream that we're sending this to, is sys. We're going to use our sys module. And then std error. Remember, standard error. You guys who have probably seen my uh, sys module series will know that this is the syntax that we're going to be using with here. And if I printed this out now, red, standard error is now red. I could redirect this to a completely different file too, like file, but it'll still display standard error because we're not we're not redirecting standard error, we're redirecting standard output. So that's why that's visible. But even if we were to print something after this that's typical standard output, it's not for dot red. Output. Now that's being redirected to the file, but if we didn't run redirect the file, we would see standard error is now red and output. But if we actually were to use that grain is set on standard output and not supply an end to it, then we could actually change the standard error and not have it manipulate the current standard output that we have here. So at the beginning, we can say 4.green is going to equal this is green. And end will equal that nothing that we had previously. Standard error is now red. This is green output. But you can see that it, it ran a little differently here. Standard error actually took priority. But we still have this is green. No new line. And then we have output, which is still green, though. But standard error is not actually affecting standard output. So you can actually have a little bit of functionality here. Um, w whether or not you're going to be outputting in standard errors in an output with different colors. It kind of makes things a bit more complex, I think. Um, but I still wanted to be able to show you guys this functionality. Uh, anyway, uh, I think this is all I'm going to go with on this one. <laughs> um, you can take this with a grain of salt, do with it as you will. But thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you thoroughly enjoyed this. I hope you thoroughly enjoyed this enough to leave me a like. Because in all honesty, that really does help me kind of get my name out there and... Uh, it makes me want to keep making more videos for you guys because I want to keep spreading this knowledge and I feel good that I have other people watching the videos. Okay, enough of me babbling. <laughs> I'll see you again, guys. Bye.